And so that takes us to the end of his uh, uh, preface. And now we want to move to um, the introduction to the book. Yep. Right, so let's spend just a few minutes here mm-hmm. on his uh, introduction so that we can get a feel for where he's headed here. And then we'll jump into the next time, jump into chapter one. So he's, he, he begins the introduction by uh, kind of a, a story. He says, in February 1973, Jesus Christ redeemed me in a darkly lit pub in Ann Arbor, Michigan. He says, I was in the final months of my senior year at Western Michigan University. Go Broncos, <laughs> right? Uh, he says, my athletic career had faltered a few years before, and I performed just well enough to keep his scholarship. So that's where he was when the Lord met him. He was in this, you know, kind of pub, and he was talking to one of his friends, right? right? right so he says his friend Bill drove him to, to the meet. He did his athletic thing and then spent the next few hours just randomly going around Ann Arbor, <laughs> Uh, in a pub where he ended up hearing the gospel. Uh, the the story that he tells is one of, uh, you wouldn't believe it if it didn't actually happen. <laughs> <type of deal. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> My life changed in an instant, he says, as he headed back to the house where he was living with a drug dealer, a vagrant that looked like Charles Manson, and a few other disrude <laughs> uh, occupants. <laughs> wow. So he says, uh, as expected, his Christian faith became an issue because he lacked the ability to offer a coherent defense. Yeah, so yeah. He doesn't know what to do now. Right, and so what he does here is uh, he graduated from college a few months later, and then within a year he was a student at Reformed Theological Seminary in Jackson, Mississippi. A little bit what we saw with Mitch Stokes' yeah, story. exactly. Yeah. So he just jumps into seminary because <laughs> he wants answers, right? And uh, he says, uh, you know, he was taking courses in Greek and Hebrew and systematic theology and church history and hermeneutics and apologetics and all these types of things you know, uh, in, in seminary. And it was at a uh, reformed theological seminary that he met Greg Bonson, right? Bonson was an associate professor of apologetics and ethics. And Bonson at the time was working on his PhD. Right. So over time they, uh, worked together on some conferences, publishing projects, and his, uh, book always ready. Bonson's book uh, always ready includes articles that, uh, he wrote for the American visions, biblical worldview magazine Mm -hmm. for three years. Greg spoke at American visions week long preparation conferences in the nineties. Right. And so now, you know, he says, we come to against all opposition, the book that we have here, he says, not long ago, he started listening to talks that Greg gave at the American visions, uh, conference, uh, the second life preparation conference. He says he was struck with how fundamentally based and impacting the material was. Uh, many books dealing with biblical apologetics, he's, he suggests, assumes too much, uh, you know, from the reader, right? right. Greg was kind of uh, basic, right, and understandable. He says most Christians don't have the time or inclination to study the topic in depth, right? And so... Um, to, to make biblical apologetics accessible to more Christians, especially young people, American Vision described, de- decided to transcribe and edit the lectures and publish them in a way that would benefit a growing interest in biblical apologetics from a presuppositional perspective. Even, uh, again, the, the term presuppositionalism, uh, you know, it, it, if you haven't taken a, a philosophy class or, or, or kind of dealt with it, you, you might kind of grit your teeth and go, oh, presuppositions. <laughs> assumptions before you make the uh, uh, your actual assumptions of what you're talking about. Uh, so uh, that's what this book intends to do. American Vision's long-term goal is to continue and enhance the legacy of the work of uh, Greg Bonson to the glory of God and the advancement of his kingdom. And uh, Tony and I were looking at <laughs> just Bonson's uh, plethora of, 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 of um, lectures, lectures and, and, yeah. and, and, and yeah. uh, talks and everything that's uh, available on Sermon Audio. And, I mean, th- just pulling out uh, books from from his his uh, his topics on his lectures uh, are are still there. So, right. um, uh, you know, I've 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 listened to other presuppositional people say, "Oh, I've I've got most of my training in presuppositionalism, not from school or from taking classes, but it's from going through Bonson's library and just just listening and and thinking it over and reading different articles about something that uh, hit or didn't hit." And and uh, so I think that's a, a pretty impressive. Uh, uh, legacy for somebody who, who we would say, oh, he he died in the at the the prime of his life. He was you know the 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 Michael Jordan right before uh, <laughs> you know the, the the first championship, and, and you know he may have gotten a ring, but you know I'm sure seven would happen after that. But uh, but you know we we just never know. And and the the fact that he's still so impactful with the audio quality that we do have, 
um, is is interesting and, and has spawned spawned out from there of, of still greater interest. It didn't die with with uh, with Bonson. It didn't die with Fantel. And um, you know, uh, people are are interacting with his stuff and 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 making more out of it. And it's exactly what the the church should be doing of, of building these legacies from uh, people in the church. Yeah. And so he says that uh, the American vision's long-term goal is to continue and enhance the legacy of Dr. Greg Bonson uh, to the glory of God and advancement of, the, of his kingdom. And he ends his, um, his introduction here by quoting Bonson mm-hmm. in his presuppositional apologetics stated <coughs> and defended. Bonson says, we must not be satisfied to present Christianity as the most reasonable position to hold among the competing options available. Rather, the Christian faith is the only reasonable out- outlook available to men. And so right. that's kind of the position, the stance that he <laughs> takes, right? right? It's the only one that works, yeah, right? It's, it's not the close approximation. <laughs> we'll eventually get there. No, no, this is the only one. And yeah. so that, dear Christian, is your job as well, is to always be prepared to give a response that entails only one answer, that incorporates all of everything that has ever existed, will exist, or has happened. So things like, what about evil, mm-hmm. is in there. And so yeah. uh, not uh, uh, explicitly stated in, in uh, presuppositional form or, or critique, but, uh, but uh, Christensen's book is very presuppositional because it does what? It doesn't start with man and reasons up, but it starts with the idea of God exists, the, uh, what, what's in the Bible is true, and what do we see from there? And so right. uh, do we have an explanation for why there is evil? You can be the person that says, oh, why did this bad thing happen? And slap God in the face. This is evil. How dare you? But you're only able to do that because you have an idea of what evil is. And you're you're sitting on your your creator's lap and, and slapping and trying to <laughs> slap him in, in, in the face. Yeah. Wow. That's, so, that's so good luck. Yeah. As you join us in Against All Opposition, Defending the Christian Worldview by uh, Greg Monson, and with uh, very special thanks to uh, Gary DeMar and uh, American Vision for putting this out and for um, all those people that released their copyrights so that we can uh, have uh, uh, Bonson's uh, uh, words with us. Uh, again, uh, there are three books uh, in this series so far, Against All Opposition, and then Impossibility of the Contrary and Pushing the Antithesis. Pushing the Antithesis uh, was out before, uh, but um, they've uh, republished uh, it and uh, included it into this pack. Uh, not sure if we're going to do these three, but uh, looking at just the, the, the topics for the other two, because I've already read Against All Opposition and put all my, my little sticky notes and, <laughs> and uh, um, uh, chapter breakdowns in here uh, of, of notes of the major points. Um, uh, it's not outside the possibility, but uh, the the coverage that uh, is entailed in all the, the other ones. If you have these three books, uh, you've you've got a good, very good grasp of uh, presuppositionalism, how to respond, and what about when they answer back. And so all all of those uh, kind of topics are included in in those three books. So uh, we're just covering the first one against all oppositions. You can get it in the link uh, below that's uh, provided at uh, American Vision. And uh, hopefully you'll join us next time as we dig into uh, chapter one of uh, Greg Bonson's lecture book series. See you next time.